Yo, what is going on, guys? This is Cyberhorn92 here, and we got another podcast, The uh, History of a Pro Player. And I'm here with who? Here with James Frazier. Yo, what's up? Thank you for being on this wonderful podcast, you know. And funny story, I actually <laughs> met him on Dueling Book uh, post bandless, you know. And thanks for um, uh, your time for being on this podcast. Got to know you a little bit better. And very rarely this happened. <laughs> um, would you like to introduce yourself and how you got into the game in the first place, by the way? Yeah, like, I'm James Frazier. Some of you may know me, some of you may not. Like, I've been, like, I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! since literally, like, the game came out, kind of. But I was a little kid, and I just got the structure decks. But, like, I didn't start playing competitive until like late 2011 early 2012 and you know like kind of worked my way up until then like my first regional top wasn't until you know the very end of 2012 so wow that that's a quite a long time you uh you played um during that time uh was that like during ancients format or what format was done uh, the end of 2012 was, man, I don't even remember what it was. It was like, I mean, cause I was playing like a really bad deck. I was just playing like a homebrew deck. I like, but there was like black wings. There was gladiator beasts. There was, or no, the end of 2010, not 20, not 2011. My bad. Oh, you know um, but yeah, it was like Black Wings, Gladiator Beast, and I mean, I don't even know what else was being played, to be honest. Like, I mean, I I just went up to locals. Like, what I was playing was definitely worse than what everybody else was playing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was just playing some homebrew deck. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. And at least uh, you top, and that, that's a really good accomplishment. I feel like that was like Edison for man. Would you say so? You know, it was actually, it was actually after Edison format. Oh, dang! I didn't. Know yeah, that. like I, I was not, I was not there for Edison format. I didn't view any coverage or anything. Like I remember, like my third or fourth locals, like people were talking about, like going to a regional. I'm like, oh my god, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> and, and and they're just like, oh yeah, we all go to this big tournament and there's gonna be 300 people there i'm like 300 people what do you mean you guys can't even beat me why would you go to 300 people no i'm, I'm kidding but like, <laughs> but no but no I was, I was like super confused but like yeah it was it was the very end of 2010 but it was that was also my first locals but then it was probably like three or four th- months later at least like when I went to my second and then a few months later when I like started going every like once a month. So, I mean, I have a weird story getting into this game. Like I really do. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Um, you, you want to talk about that story or you want to save it for another time or. Uh, yeah, no, I mean like, I, I mean like I can talk about it. Like I, uh, like I live in Mount Over, Ohio and like Mount Orb from Cincinnati is about 40 minutes and like our closest locals was there. And like me and my friend group, like, you know, we didn't, we didn't roll up there that often. Like I actually saw my first like opportunity at locals because I was watching also with my uh, grandma. Right. Mm-hmm. And so with my grandma, watching tv right Mm -hmm. she always watched the news and it popped up rock and roosters locals oh yeah and then it popped up all these different things they did but then it popped up yugi i'm like no shot like i gotta go (laughs) (laughs) and i'm like i first off i couldn't even believe that was on tv but it was that's crazy that that yeah yeah no, go ahead. 
that that rarely happened because I think the only I can think of top of my head was on a TV show was like the Yu-Gi-Oh YCS Long Beach like advertised like how many players shows up but like this that's crazy I'd never heard of this story before yeah this was our local TV station oh like back in like yeah like back in 2010 and like I saw it and I'm like oh my god I need to go because because we always played like we played Yu-Gi-Oh just for fun with mm-hmm. each other, but we never played any meta decks, right? It was mm-hmm. just like gather your best cards and whatever. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we I saw that commercial and I to, and I told my friends, I'm like, oh my god, like we gotta go, right? Mm-hmm. About a month later, we went, right? Mm-hmm. And like, I didn't do great. I'll be honest. It was four rounds. I went two two. I. None of my friends even won two, but you know, like we were kind of hooked then. So we went back every couple months after we were playing against each other, and it just kind of, it kind of advanced into that point. But it, you know, every event I got more and more competitive. That's good. You're like keep on trying until you you success, um, topping and accomplish something. Yeah, that's true. Um. I was wondering how many events have you topped? I, I look into and you top a lot. Yeah, I have. Uh, I think I have uh, three regional wins, fourteen regional tops, two YCS tops, two PPG tops. Oh wow! An ARG win and. Uh, 11 ARG tops. Wow, that is a lot. Do you have um do you have a favorite event that you top that you listed and least favorite event um that you top? So a favorite and a least favorite? Yeah, mm-hmm. that that you top. Mm. I guess my least favorite would be the only time I lost in the first cut of top right and Mm -hmm. it was a whole judge thing that i got rolled wrong it was arg columbus and i was super pissed afterwards but like i'm not gonna get into that i'm not gonna (laughs) but that that's definitely my least favorite because like i entered into damage stuff Mm -hmm. and he said okay and there was a judge sitting right by us and he said you know whatever like he's just like yeah. Uh. Wait. No. Wait. He didn't say you're you're okay with any damage, stuff, but but whatever. I'm not gonna get into that. Yeah, but yeah, my yeah. favor is always gonna be your first. Oh yeah. And it's not even gonna be my first YCS top. It's actually gonna be my first regional top. But here's the funny scenario. Mm-hmm. There's gonna be about one percent of your viewers that know who I am. Also, Jordan winners like together. Like Ooh. Jordan Winters, like he quit playing Yu Gi Oh a long time ago, but me and him are best friends, and we top aided our first regional together. Ooh, congrats! On that. And we and we top aided our first YCS together. That's crazy. But but the best feeling was that first regional top for me. Oh yeah, no, it's it's um a huge accomplishment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and 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 the YCS was like super crazy too Mm -hmm. may like maybe the ycs is actually better for me i don't know but like Mm -hmm. i did it right by side like jordan so like that is what it is yeah understandable like i was in the same situation like you when i say oh like i went couple region um i go to couple couple regional i say oh i was close bubbling i got my national invite it was cool but i really want a top eight get the prize just like felt like i deserved because like Sure, regional is okay, but I feel like it's an accomplishment because, like, if you go X2, it's hard to guarantee top 8. Because, like, I feel like it's harder because, like, in a YCS, if you go X2, you're guaranteed top cut. No, no, guaranteed day 2, but you need to win both rounds at least. Um, right. But, yeah, I, I feel like regional count as a top. Do you, do you think that count as a top? Some people are debatable. I'm just curious on your side. Um, so, I think it counts it counts as a regional top, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like I, 
I don't think it counts as a top overall. Oh. But also, like, yeah, but but here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Like, who cares what people think about a top, right? That's like, true. if you top a regional and you feel good about it, anybody that's, like, shitting on you probably doesn't even have a regional top. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that th- that's my thing with it. Yeah, that's true. Understandable. Like, you know, it is for every player. And it's just like, you know, like... If there's fucking you know 300 people i i can i cuss on this podcast or no uh yeah yeah i, I don't mind i don't mind okay um <laughs> i asked that after i cussed like three times <laughs> no but way. uh like no like what i'm saying is like no like like i don't think a regional can match even an arg in back in the day and i don't think it matched definitely doesn't match a YCS, but you know, like, you know, if you top a regional, you know, and you fucking, you, you played out of your mind, like there's, there should be nobody that hates on you for that. Cause that is an accomplishment. Like you're sitting in the room with hundreds of other players, like, yeah. And, and you got top eight and they didn't. So, yeah, I that, mean, that's that how sense. I view it. Yeah, that makes sense. And mention about it. Do you have um when you got into the game of Yu Gi Oh? Is there any like pro players that inspire you to do well at the event or be better? Would you say so? Uh yeah. So like when I got into the game, so like when I got into the game, pro players that inspired me. Mm-hmm. That's the question. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um. I loved Billy Break when I got into the game. I used to, I used to view him on like the Konami blogs and like cheer for him mm-hmm. because like my first deck I had like fully complete was X Sabers before I even went to events, and I always used to cheer for Billy Break. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say he super inspired me though because like I don't think I ever really played X Sabers <laughs> at an event, <laughs> but. But you know what I mean? Like I, I cheered for Billy break, you know, Mm -hmm. but when when I got into the game, you know, like, you know, the, the past Cincinnati legends, Tony Meyer, YCS winner. He's one of my closest friends to this day, Anthony Meyer, if you want to look him up. Um, and then, uh, Skep Brock, Eddie Goodlander, if you want to look him up, I, I hate that I have to say two different names for them, but they have two different names, but I, but I said the real names and like when I started getting into the game, you know, like I became really close with a lot of pro players. Like I became really close with Dalton Balsman, Dirk Wagner, uh, Robert Scarpelli, and hell, even like 2015, why? Like, we actually had a little nickname for a group. It was called the Dirk Squad because we all love Dirk, right? And he was in our like our, our testing group. Mm-hmm. And if you look back, like 2014 is when Sahabi oh, that won with Infernity, right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then fast forward six months later. Why says Chicago 2015? Uh, Sahabi came up to me and he's like, James, I'm like, yeah, he's like, I fucking love you. He's like, I love the Dirk squad, I love you, man. <laughs> I know, like, and I was like, I was flabbergasted, I really was. Yeah. Wow, that's really nice of him. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I mean, I was like, I was stunned. Yeah, no, that that guy is really good. Um, is he still play Yu Gi Oh or is he still on the roster that currently can't play at the time being? Or? I I he's on band now. We're not gonna talk about why he got banned because oh, yeah, that was yeah. years after, and he's been on band now for a while. But I, I just think he's done with Yu Gi Oh. But like, yeah. I was like so happy that the reigning national. I wasn't even happy. I was just like fucking. I was flabbergasted. <laughs> 
Because, <laughs> like, like, Sahabi walks up to you? Yeah, no, that guy's a really good. And it's crazy that, like, in Worlds, he won. I believe he won Worlds as well. And then, like, it's, like, I say no, but he actually won. Because, like, in the OCG, they always win. And, like, we say, oh, my gosh. Like, when was the last time? Like, um, different countries. Um, won. Not, 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 yeah. not, not, no due respect, OCG. I do love them. Like, they're a very smart player, intelligent. But, like, something different, you know? But, end of the day, like, it was crazy. And Sahabi into the streak. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, but yeah, he did. Yeah, I, I really hope he comes back. If just in case you do watch this, I um, you're a pretty good player, by the way. <laughs> um, but yeah, so mention about that. Uh, how did you get into a uh, sponsor from the card guys or a sponsor from other um, clan or I don't know the way you say it. Yeah, like how I got reached out to the card guys. Um. So, I've been on, like, a few different teams, and I'm not going to go super into detail on the car Mm -hmm. guys, but, like, Mm -hmm. when I joined the car guys, they were the best team in the world, and my first team under them was a regional, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I won the regional first place that's crazy uh it was it was crazy but then it but then it started to fall apart because i joined it like the last six months or so oh no maybe three months of the car guys i'm not gonna get into their downfall and stuff yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. but you know and then after basically everyone had left the car guys it was just done right like i mean when i say everyone i mean like everyone yeah and then two months later i won my rg with pendulum magician that's crazy so yeah. and best deck <laughs> yeah um but you know like it, it was very cool to be offered a spot on the car guys it was awesome yeah would you say that like if anyone wanted to sponsor would you say they need to be recognized do well in events like topping and stuff like that would you say so or yeah i mean like that's the main way you can get Mm -hmm. recognized also you can you but you can also get sponsored other ways like you know like if you just play good online and get recognized in different groups right Mm -hmm. you know you you can get added into those circles not like added into it like a group but like just like be recognized by different circles Mm -hmm. and if you're just killing it online Mm -hmm. you could possibly get sponsored without ever doing that much at an event yeah that's true i believe that guy um and three nash he's been getting a lot of recognized like i've been seeing his username back in the day and like i said who is this guy i really hope this person reveal who he was and like i said oh yeah that's that's the guy (laughs) Um, he's a really yeah. good player. Uh, I believe he got yeah Nash. Yeah, he's a really good player. Um, mention about um when you top um an event. Uh, when you when you usually play test, uh, do you usually play test in person or online? That works for you, the best. Um, I will prefer to do online testing because mm-hmm. I'm like I'm home way more than I am out in the world like now now like i would love to play test in person Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you know i don't live super close to anybody i can play test with like also like the the cool thing with play testing online Mm -hmm. is that you literally have access to every deck every card everything that's true that's true so yeah i mean i guess when you put it like that like i would prefer to play test online yeah, makes sense. Cause like any pro players or like high rank, they always perform in real life like the same results. Like okay, you've been grinding online. Like sure, it's um RNG. You're basically kind of like playing real life, but you had to do it all by yourself, reading, communicate with your opponent. Um, it it always turned out always those player top after top. Like when I talk, um, a lot of pro players like no green, uh nine oh two. He used to play the game. 
Um, oh yeah, you know Noah. Noah's a good friend of mine. Oh yeah, yeah, Noah Green. Yeah, I'll, I was in a call with him uh, back in the day with Jackie Brunel. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, there, there's there's so so many pro player. I um, can't think of top of my head, but like it just converts to um real life. It totally makes sense. And I like both play tests because like just in case you have no one to play test, there you yeah. go. Um, doing book or doing network. Like if I have my deck completely set up and mm-hmm. and like good to go, mm-hmm. yeah, I'd probably rather prefer to just like summon my opponent in real life and play against them. <laughs> but mm-hmm. other than that, I'd rather just play test online to get my deck set up. You yeah, know what I mean? That's true. And I kind of like online because like sometimes people don't want to drive to locals because like first of all, it can be right. very far for certain people. Um. <laughs> And cards, right. especially, are very expensive. Um, I felt like when you feel comfortable, like a deck, then you have to buy the cards. Like, I respect anyone, like, oh, buy the cards, test it. That's, that's personally fine, but, like, I feel like that's, like, so much money down the drain. Unless, like, you're wealthy, then you can do all you want. But, like, if, you know, I'm just saying the game is very expensive. So, mm-hmm. I'd rather do feel comfortable playing the deck and then pick it up afterwards, in a way. But, yeah, that's just me. Um... But yeah, so that was interesting about your username, uh, Big James. <laughs> uh, how you got into Dan? I'm um, in the first place. Just curious, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot this would be a question. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like my uh, DB name is Big James, and uh, back in seventh grade. My name was obviously still James, and I was still, you know, a little bigger guy. And I was really good friends with Ben, and then Ben was also friends with this little guy. Oh, Ben Leverett? Named? N- no, I didn't go to high school. Oh. With ben. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a story, right? But no, 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 no. Like one of my best friends, like his name was Ben, and he also had a different friend that was named James. And I was like, you know, I was okay with him too. Mm-hmm. Didn't hate him or anything. Mm-hmm. But like he just started calling me Big James and him Little James. And <laughs> I like, and it stuck so much. Like it stuck through middle school and mm-hmm. high school. And then I just kind of kept it like yeah. Big James. I kind of like yeah. it. That is a cool story, man. Like a nickname, dude. That that's so cool, man. Yeah. Um. So I know this is a little bit too personal. We don't have to answer this question. Um. How are how old are you? Just in case. Um. If you want to share that. Yeah. No. I, I mean, I don't mind. I'm. Uh, I. I turned uh, thirty. In July. Oh, happy happy um early birthday. Just in case, if I might forget. <laughs> But um, mention about age. Uh, do you think that um, Yu-Gi-Oh kind of involved? It used to be a kids' card game, but then over time, the game kind of got complex. Like not saying like little kids can play, but I feel like the the card game in general is way difficult than other card games. Um. Yeah, like th- this is my biggest problem with Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh-huh. To be honest, like mm-hmm. I think Yu-Gi-Oh attracts in the younger generation more than any other card game does. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But trying to teach them current is like crazy. (laughs) Like, and that's what I don't, you know, like, I like, I mean, this is like your podcast exclusive because like, this really does mean a lot to me. Like it's so hard to teach a younger player current Mm -hmm. Yu-Gi-Oh. It's almost like, it's almost impossible. Yeah, because, like, like to, if anyone that who started the game a long time ago, all the way into now, they know, like, the whole mechanic, like, fusion, XYZ, a pendulum, like, you guys probably don't understand what I'm talking about. It's, like, basically, you need to start the game from scratch, like, beginning, middle, and end, basically. And it's not, like, a shortcut. Sure, you can, like, learn the easy, basic step, but, like, there's some rulings and evolve, um, very difficult. Yeah, but but it's even more than that, man. Like yeah. if you're teaching, you know, <laughs> like a 12, 14 year old, <laughs> hell, even if you're teaching a 20 year old, right? Yeah. Like, and they don't know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh! It is really hard to catch them up to current. Exactly. Like there's so like many... it's 
Like, mm-hmm. I mean, hell, even a 30 year old, a 40 year old, a 60 year old, like, it doesn't matter. Like, it's really hard to catch people up in Yu Gi Oh! Mm-hmm. Cause you can't just be like, oh, yeah, you get one normal summon. <laughs> and then when their life points drop to zero, you win. That mm-hmm. is, has nothing to do with what the game is, though. Too right? Big, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But um, makes sense, makes sense. Um, that's the thing I like about the game is challenging. It just like make think outside the box. Cause uh, yeah, no, no, like like I I love Yu Gi Oh. Mm-hmm. I really do. Yeah. I just think it's like with all the mechanics, it's really hard to teach new players. It is. That's true. That's true. I mean, maybe I'll say like the beginning would be easier for everyone. Like Speed Duel, I guess that would be the good way. Or like play online games like Simulator, I guess. Yeah, but if you. If you teach somebody speed duel and they play it for a year, then you bring them the current, they're oh, they're yeah. gonna feel like they're playing a different game. Oh yeah, never mind. That's true. That's true. You do have a good point on that. And plus, like the competitor seems like under the surface, like you don't know like what it's like as well. I've been talking to, some, to pro players. It's kind of like you know what's above, and then you don't know what's underneath. Like people actually take this game actually really serious. Um, because we're we're all here to win or do well, recognized. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty cool. Uh, what, what do you do for a living? If, if you want to um, answer that, just curious. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm basically like, uh, I sell online oh, for a nice. living. Oh, nice. Like cards in general or particular or anything like that? Um, uh, mo- mostly cards, like at least 50% cards. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, the thing I like about the game, like, you can make profits, too. Like, um, you can. Like, like we all know this. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! is very expensive. Would you say it's other expensive than, than Magic? Or I'm, unless I'm the opposite, the other way around? <laughs> I would say it's, like, like, um, if you're into it for just a hobby, mm-hmm. it's probably less expensive than Magic, mm. to be honest. Because I feel like there's always, like, that like kind of cheap deck that you can play yeah in Mm -hmm, mm Yu-Gi-Oh but like I don't know magic that well like recently right like I used to I used to run card shops right Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. but even back then like I I still feel like Yu-Gi-Oh is like more affordable and people like you know they like to hate on Yu-Gi-Oh's calls but like Mm -hmm. it's really not that bad yeah like it, it's really not that bad, like unless you just want to just buy every expensive card right when it comes out. Like, <laughs> but I mean, if you want to do that, then sure. But like, you know, if you're not winning with them, then that is what it is. Yeah, that is true. Um, mention about that. Uh, what's your thoughts about uh people who actually love the game so much, or what was the reason why people play max rarity? Do they care about the game or? Or something like that, or does it make you draw well? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so I played Max Rarity. <laughs> um, Patrick Hoban actually made an article about this, and I don't know if it's true for everybody, but it's definitely true for me. Mm-hmm. I do feel like he he made an article back in the day. I don't mm-hmm. know if it can be pulled up or not, but like the role of the king, not for this podcast, but like. Mm-hmm. No, 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 that's his book. Oh. Um, but, like, he made an article, and he basically said that, like, obviously playing high rarity cards are not going to make you draw better, so. but they might but they might make you feel better, mm-hmm. like, as you're drawing them. Okay. Makes and, they might, and they might put you in a better, like, sense than your opponent is okay right Mm -hmm. and i and i do kind of get that right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now i'm not playing them for that reason really Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i do get what he's saying because like i do i do love drawing my high rarity card like you know like i have a five thousand dollar go deck right Uh like uh i don't need to have that but i like to have it like You know, like, but no, I don't think that high rarity and current, like, for 99% of people, 
probably 100% of people, to be honest. Like, it's not going to actually help you do better. It's definitely not going to help you draw better. That's true. I, I'll, I'll put that out of the window right now. <laughs> it's, not, it's not going to help you draw better. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like, in a day, it is like cards. Like, I, I can see why people play because like, they actually do care about the game. And, like, when you mention about it, like, so, I don't max rarity. Like, sometimes when I draw the expensive card, I, it's like my brain, like, process, okay, okay, I, I need to play better. Like, see all the plays. I, I don't know. That's just me. That, that, I, I, that's what how I feel. What would you say? You feel the same? He's like, you see all the lines or whatever, in a way, the play style. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. Like I mean, like at the mm-hmm. end of the day, like it's not gonna matter. <laughs> like it's not gonna <laughs> matter how much money you have in your deck. Yeah, that's true. But it, but you know, for a whole tournament, like if if you feel better with the high rarity cards, which is what Huben's article was about, like mm-hmm. you know, you can feel like an a, a euphoria feeling, right? Mm-hmm. Like that, like you're just better than your opponent, but. That also comes with like person to person. I think like yeah. I don't agree a hundred percent with his article, but I definitely get what he was saying. Yeah, no, I I totally understand, and like I do respect anyone um, who loved this game, like like care about the game so much, obsessed with the game. Um, and also the downside, I can actually see that like it's cool to use max rarity, but like if somebody you're playing against, like oh in a tournament or locals, like they don't know it's max rarity. You just shuffle, and then, oops, something damaged, and then, like, oh, is it... If, so, if somebody has a $3,000 deck, and somebody has a $50 deck, yeah. and the guy with a $50 deck is just absolutely better than the other guy, mm-hmm. I'm going to bet on him every time, by the way. Yeah. No, uh, no, no, not... not I mean, Ho- Ho- Hoban's, mm-hmm. Hoban's thing was just, like, you know, it's just, like... You're already a top player, but you know you get the fucking max rarity stuff going on, and then you just feel like a little more euphoria. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like I don't know. Something like I don't know how to explain it, but like <laughs> I, I, I definitely, I definitely got what he was saying. Yeah, um, I would say that like, like what I meant to say that like uh, two things scenario that like oh like. They pull out their very accessory, their small grounds. If you guys don't know the small grounds, look it up. Small ground, nineteen ninety four or championship. They're like worth thousands of dollars. And like every time when I was in that situation, when I didn't never own one until now, I I understand like it make you feel good. It's kind of like when you're wearing a clothes, you actually feel good, you feel confident. And like when somebody know about it, oh shoot, this guy's actually serious. So like it kind of like you're kind of like get scared playing against someone that, that that's how i feel when if it's like oh i actually know that pro player or i never met this pro player before but or a player that have very nice stuff okay this person is actually really serious so like like feel like a sweat player you know <laughs> yeah yeah and um 1999 spellground by the way the best one. Oh, what about the 94 <laughs> The 99 looks the best, though. Yeah, and no. it's the most noticeable. Yeah, no, I, I respect that, man. I respect that. Um, And, like, the second scenario, I'm afraid that, like, when somebody use expensive card playing any event, or especially local, if somebody damage your cards, oh, like, there, there's a situation, like, oh, like, the, I don't think the judge are going to be involved. I do have a story. Do you have any more questions before uh, no, I, no. like... Nope, that's all. Yep. You're done out. Sorry. Okay. I do have a funny story though about damaging cards. Mm -hmm. I was at the ARG championship, right? Mm -hmm. It was 450 players, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was seven and no, right? This was a 10 round event. Mm -hmm. And I won game one, right? Yep. And then I hand my opponent my deck, and he starts shuffling my deck. He literally splits my ulti first set Veiler in half. Oh. And I don't, like, I don't think it was, like, intentional, right? But, like, mm-hmm. I was like, Jesus Christ. By the way, ulti Veiler wasn't that expensive back then. Yeah. Like, it, I mean, it was, like, under 100. I should say it was expensive, Still expensive. but it wasn't, it but it wasn't, it wasn't what it is now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like I obviously got one, 
you know, I ordered another one right after, but I was like, Jesus Christ. Like, I was like, holy fuck, dude. I'm so pissed off that they split my Valor, dude. Damn. And I just got locked in on game two, and of course I won. Yeah. But like, and then I topped the event. But like, I was so mad that he shuffled my deck and split my ulti Valor. Dang. What? Well, so after when that happened, um, if you want to talk about, it, you don't have to. Um, did a person replace it, or is um the no. judge able to replace it, or? Who else would be able to replace it? Like the Konami staff or anything? They're not involved with it. I'm guessing. Well, this was A or G event. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, never mind. Okay, that, that's a different scenario. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, it was a big event, but like, also, I knew it was an accident. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I was watching him shuffle my deck. Like, he didn't really mean to. Yeah. But it definitely happened, and I was just yeah. like what the hell yeah no um, but i mean you know like i i sold the veiler that he split in half what? that's crazy on uh yeah no i did it was like for like half the value dang all right somebody probably put like super glue on it but <laughs> like oh, gosh. Okay. but i'm just saying like i i was definitely not happy with that yeah no i understand if i was in that situation i would be very pissed off i'm just gonna like either call the judge or like Oh, you had to pay my cards. Like, I, I don't know. I like, cause like, we all know that this game, like, is so much expensive, depending like what rarity, but like, if somebody damages it, you're going to have like horrible day. If the person's not going to replace it, you either pay out of pocket or try to find someone yeah. to replace it. It's just like, uh, just like gigantic, like so much stress. I would be stressed out. And, the, and that's why like, well, like I wasn't that stressed out because I cared way more about topping that event than yeah. my Valor, to be yeah. honest. That's true, that's true. Like, but I also knew that he didn't do it on purpose, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. This is also YCS Champion that did it. I'm not going to mm-hmm. mention his name. Yeah, yeah. Nice. But, but, you know, like, I knew it was an accident. Mm-hmm. And also, it was a uh, Duelist Revolution ulti. I don't know if you know about them, but they are super flimsy. Oh, yeah, like the Solemn Warning? One? Yeah, it's Warning Veil or Scrap Dragon. Oh, they yeah, are yeah. super flimsy. Oh, yeah. I heard they're really nice um, as well. Um, yeah, so, like, I, I knew it wasn't knew it wasn't malicious, but yeah. wasn't happy about it, yeah. by the way. But, Maybe, you know, yeah. I won game one and then cooked him game two, so it was yeah. fun. I would say if anyone that's watching or listening to the podcast, like you playing in Max Rarity deck and you playing against your opponent, just say hey, just be careful with my cards. I, I feel like I'll be um the good way and also like not saying the mean way oh eight damage a card you have to pay. I, I, I don't know. I, I've been hearing about that happen recently. People on Facebook ask a question about the ruling, oh if somebody damage your card, like what will happen? But I, I personally don't know. I've never been in this scenario. But um, yeah, and then that's the, the only time it's ever happened to me. Like, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, and like I, this guy knew how knew how to handle like cards too. It wasn't mm-hmm. like a thing where like it was malicious at all. To be honest, mm. yeah, it, it happens. Can do nothing about it. But um, yeah, just move on. But um, last question. So, any advice to um any players that out there want to be in the competitive scene or trying to top at least? Any advice? Yeah, for sure. Um, like, I I assume people have heard this before, but like, I'm gonna I'm gonna pound it into the ground. Like, it's literally about test. It's about two things. You have to test. You can't just hope to be good without testing. You have to test your ass off. And two. Once you once you test enough, right, and you start to get a little good, you're going to have, like, circles opened up to you. Mm-hmm. Whether they're the best circles at first doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. But eventually, you'll get into other, like, circles where you can, you know, mm-hmm. really talk and really test and really beat great players in the in those circles like but it really does come down to you like it, it's no like it's nothing i could say like okay just just do this and you'll just win like no 
that that's not how Yu-Gi-Oh is. Like just test mm-hmm. your tail off, yeah, right? I got you. And then uh, and then eventually you'll get into circles and keep testing your tails off against you know the circle mm-hmm. that you're in or the circles that you're in, mm-hmm. and then yeah, go from there. Yeah, no, I I like that. Like it, just in case my advice for as a pro player, I'm I'm not a pro player. I like I have like some tops but not as much like um games here <laughs> but um <laughs> but yeah like just like try to play test as much as possible if you can go to like your locals it's okay um go on i'm pretty sure anyone have discord server um i, I felt like that's the close enough or dueling book um is the best way i felt like uh, that would be the b- best platform because like well when- yeah okay okay yeah let me go back yep. when i say testing I, I actually do mean dueling book because mm-hmm. that's free testing against anybody, right? Yeah, that's true, that's true. And it doesn't matter if you're playing against bad – like, play rated dueling book. Mm-hmm. Like, I've been number one on, on dueling network twice, wow. right? That's, that, that's not dueling book, but it was before dueling yeah. book. OG, OG. And then, and then I've been in top ten on dueling book twice. Wow. I don't play as much online now. As I used to, but like, yeah. but if you keep playing, you're gonna, you're gonna match up against players that are Skilled better than you. Yeah. Definitely. And if they're not better than you, then beat them. And then you'll yeah. go up in rating. Like, yeah. that's it. That's true. And there should be like a replay you can watch, see um, what mistake you did, what couldn't you have done better. Um, ask your opponents, oh, is this the right route to play? Like, not like saying at the, um, at the beginning of the duel, maybe after the duel, and then if they're nice to you, um, they'll be nice to all. They say, "Oh, you should have done this, this," or the Billy Break say that um, you like in real life, you get a group of people, you play one v one, both show each other hand. Um, you you tell me you do this first interaction, then I'll tell you all oh, that that's gonna play, or oh, you should have done this and stuff like that. But um, wh- whichever works yeah. best for you guys. Yeah, and that's what uh, that's what Hoban and, and the Leverage used to do is like play open hand against each other. Yeah, true, true, true. Like, which I kind of like that too, but I also kind of like not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't know <laughs> how to say. It. Like I kind of like that. Also, just like I guess if you're playing like a super combo mirror, that makes mm-hmm. sense. But like. If there's any background involved at all, or any mm-hmm. secrets, or any hand traps, it's kind of just know. like yeah. just weird. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, but I think that's about it. What to say? I uh, thank you for having you on my podcast. And you guys do watch the video all the way to the end. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, turn on post notification. And before ending this video, do you want to give any shout outs or any last words before ending this podcast? Yeah, I'm gonna give a shout out to Cincinnati Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, I think Cincinnati Yu-Gi-Oh! is very strong right now. Um, give a shout-out to Skep Brock. He is my testing partner for old formats. I'm going to give a shout-out to Josh Kipp, Larry Musgrove. Um, heck, I could go on and on, but most <laughs> importantly, I'm going to give a shout-out to you, Robin, for having me on here. Oh, thank you. You're welcome, man. And yeah, it was crazy. We actually met last minute on doing book, um, play test new current format. Um, but yeah, um, I think that I should probably do one for now on, uh, see who I can um, talk more in the future. <laughs> but yeah, right. Yeah, your boy, uh, Cyberborn Knight Two is signing out. See you guys later. Peace.